Welcome to the Nutramedical Report live for the 1st of October, and it's hard to believe we're already there in the 1st of October. I was in a state of shock last night after I watched the first fall episode of Homeland. Of course, the Homeland miniseries uh, on uh, CBS is about a uh, an American who is actually kept in civil detention in uh, a prison in, uh, it looks like, Afghanistan, according to the the background of it, uh, the the subtitle, of course, is that uh, he uh, is very badly abused until finally one of the people there that uh, is the overlords of the civil detention camp starts to treat him quote with kindness, converts him to Islam, and of course he gets friendship in teaching the son of one of these people, and the son dies in a drone strike. Of course the issue is this gentleman comes back to America and uh, as he rises to the position after the first season of being a congressman and now is in the position of being nominated as a vice presidential candidate now what's interesting in the show last night is the very first thing they did was uh, talk about it as its reality that five different sites in in Iran were struck including the nuclear reactor Bashir by Israel uh, and that America backed it up uh, as if this has really happened. Now, you know, the media are constantly manipulating the population, but this is probably one of the most gross situations that we have because the bomb uh, model that was given at the United Nations uh, last week by Mr. Netanyahu of a preemptive attack on a live nuclear reactor and a number of sites supposedly to stop the missile attack potentially against Israel is one of the most obscene uh, things that's probably ever been on the public media uh, or put against the public. Uh, over the weekend I saw a video, in fact, where Torah Jews were actually giving an award to Ahmadinejad because in Torah Judaism, the very state Israel shouldn't exist until Messiah returns. And it's anathema to Torah Judaism to even have a state of Israel because the state of Israel was founded by communists, by socialists and atheists, Sabbateans, who are followers of Shabbatite V. We've had um, Barry Chamish on before. We'll bring him back on the program to talk about his book, Shabbatites V and Labor Zionism and the Rise of the State of Israel. Israel basically was founded by Sabbatean Jews uh, in conjunction with uh, the Nazis and with the globalist bankers. Uh, we should call it Rothschild land. Uh, yes, there is a, an Aliyah planned, but an Aliyah to the return to the land of the Israel was supposed to occur after the return of Messiah. So they gave an award to Ahmadinejad because of his care and his good relations with the 50,000 Jews that live just in Tehran alone, uh, let alone all the Jews that have railed against the idea of being forced to return from Iran to Israel when they have uh, been living there for thousands of years in perfect safety with no problems whatsoever in Iran. So we have an interesting situation. In fact, as I mentioned before, that uh, the very first witness that you'll see on the world stage will be a Torah, not a Sabbatean Jew, a Torah Jew, who's awaiting the coming of Messiah. They, of course, missed the first coming of Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, and they eventually will get to the realization that the, quote, second coming that they're assuming is actually, uh, that they assume is the first coming, is actually the coming of Messiah HaMashiach. There will also be uh, many other things you'll see revealed, but the, the plan has nothing to do with nuclear devices that's going on in Israel. It's the control of oil with the discovery that there's eight times more oil in Iraq <coughs> in, uh, than there is in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is running out of oil. Within 20 years, uh, at its current rate of use, oil, Saudi Arabia will basically <coughs> no longer be an oil power. Uh, the number one gas producer in the world using abiotic oil, which is a dirty secret by the uh, oil companies, they've known this for 60 years, is oil is the blood of the earth. It's down at 35 to 40,000 feet. Virtually anywhere you drill, you find it. It's much closer to the earth in some locations, like off Penn Pendleton. There's 15 billion barrels of oil there. If you go to the uh, area of northern Iraq, uh, there's uh, estimated that there's somewhere around... Um, somewhere around 800 to 1.2 2 trillion barrels of oil. I told uh, uh, Hayseed Stevens uh, that I was shown supernaturally the uh, geology at the South West into the Dead Sea in 1999 in Dallas, Texas when I spoke at the Prophecy Club. He shared with me and brought me to uh, FICO, who is a senior oil engineer for the Israeli oil company, working with, uh, with uh, 
Sharon, with uh, Ariel Sharon, uh, and uh, <clears throat> what happened is that uh, there is 27 trillion barrels of oil, which is many times the total world proven oil reserves, which is also renewable, which is why you can go to the oil pumpers you know, all across America that are in the back of ranchers, yards in Oklahoma and Texas and through the Midwest, and you'll see the oil is returned. In fact, if we just even use those pumpers, we'd have plenty of oil. The real issue is a matter of control of the population, just like we have Obama with Obamacare. Uh, we we're going to get Dr. Adam Doran back on the program. Obamacare doesn't deal with the fact that they can take mid-levels and technicians and try to, quote, turn them into doctors. This is not reasonable, not rational, and not safe. Uh, we, you know, 95% of things are common variety, and 5% of things will kill you if you don't have proper evaluation by a properly trained, certified health professional. So that's the problem, is you need to have a, a chain of command where if things fall beyond the anomalies that you'd ordinarily see, like a nurse intake nurse at the emergency department immediately gets bumped to the emergency doctor, from the emergency doctor to the trauma surgeon, from the trauma surgeon to the neurosurgeon, etc. It has to go higher and higher depending on things that, based on analysis, go beyond the level of skills, training, and experience of the people involved. Uh, we don't see that. Obamacare basically doesn't, uh, as Dr. Doran said recently in an email he sent me yesterday, it doesn't uh, deal with the fact that we're going to have an additional 30-some million Americans, and Obama has not increased the number of residency positions and funding for doctors and uh, MDs and DOs to, to take up that slack or to deal with the fact that we, uh, if we change the uh, system so the doctors could stay working part-time, whether they're females and that are having pregnancies or they're elderly doctors, they can't afford their malpractice because they don't have any uh, tort reform, uh, or just the cost of practice. Uh, the whole system of funding should be not based on the fee-for-service. It should be based on a wage based on your uh, experience, university uh, training, uh, public service, and no matter what the doctor does, including public service, they should be paid for it, and once they get ill or sick or can only work certain hours, they should get their pensions, and that would also get rid of exorbitant fees, but also prevent doctors from going back up when they do their job. It would allow mid-levels to assume care that uh, would not be taken care of by the doctor, because you'd bump it down. And you don't want, as they say, engineers turning wrenches or doing TIG welding when you should have welders and technicians doing those things. Especially if they get experience, they get better. Just like EMTs get better at doing certain things than emergency doctors if they do a lot more of it. So uh, we have a situation that is out of control, and uh, we'll bring on one of the uh, authors of a recent film called Dreams of My Real Father, uh, talking about the real father of Barack Obama, who is obviously Frank Marshall Davis. He looks like Frank Marshall Davis, who is a communist. We had on a program a few years ago a physicist who actually met uh, a, uh, several physicists who are actually measures of also the GRU in Russia, which is the internal party of the Russian Communist Party internally. <clears throat> and they told uh, this physicist who reported this on the program several years ago that Obama was a died in the wool red uh, communist that his father Marshall, Frank Marshall Davis was he was his quote uh, father in Hawaii who took care of him from uh, his real biological mother who had him when she was only 17 or impregnated at that time by Frank Marshall Davis when he was 55 we have a situation where we have a communist who is destroying the country uh, making the country more and more dependent and the situation is getting uh, worse by the uh, by the day and hour so uh, we have a call from Richard in Washington wants to uh, challenge a uh, need for doctors. Uh, well, Richard, before we get you on the air, I want you to specifically state what your statement is or question because uh, uh, this is not an open forum to just kind of make any kind of statement. I want to have a specific question. So if you can tell us, we come back in the break, uh, specifically to our to John at the board up, we'll um, respond to your question.
back to the uh, Nutramedical Report. Just to give you some idea of the uh, topics we're working on all the time behind the scenes, uh, I'm continuing to, to try to get testing done of the material from the World Trade Center. And of course, we're looking specifically for what's called heavy isotopes that are non radioactive due to neutron insertion because the micronukes that were in the World Trade Center uh, were like neutron bombs. They release uh, mainly a uh, minimal radiation and mainly blast energy and that blast energy would of course superheat the uh, anything that's paramagnetic including people which is water uh, aluminum and many other paramagnetic uh, things paper is not paramagnetic so it can be blown at the sides of the building whereas anything including concrete which is paramagnetic would be vaporized into a, atomic dust uh, as a result uh, paramagnetic things and magnetic things such as steel would be uh, turned to an atomic vapor we know that a third of the mass of the building was not present uh, reviewed and presented five years ago, June, the uh, data had many different sources. One of them was Dr. Ed Ward, MD, and he'll be back on the program coming up on October 11th. Uh, we've had many other scientists, including uh, Mr. Vials. I have uh, two anonymous physicists that I've been working with in the past, a uh, physics professor, teacher in high school who actually reviewed the number of terajoules of energy required to turn the building to an atomic vapor, and uh, a number of other experts, including Dr. Asaf Jarakovich and other experts that I've worked with. The uh, material I received from the uh, Finnish munitions scientist, uh, who was actually an, a, a uh, demolitions expert from Finland, was uh, had a request to do a submission to the Port Authority in New York in 1999 to demolish the World Trade Center, which is a hazardous building because it has asbestos in it. It was estimated to cost roughly $1.5 billion per floor to remove the asbestos from the actual building. They decided to double insure it and, of course, demolish it. And, of course, it was a demolition with primarily micronukes. The uh, issue of thermate or superthermate, thermate is not really a proper cutter. The cutter that's usually used is RDX. You can cut it and put it on tapes. It cuts the girders right nicely, so it's easy to demolish a building. Superthermate, there's only one place that makes it, and that is actually in Israel. Israel is the only place where they make superthermate uh, in the world. And superthermate does have a much more explosive capacity, <coughs> but thermate primarily is used in uh, incendiary bombs as far back as the Second World War. Uh, so the idea that thermate was used as a primary means to demolish girders six feet across with two inches of asbestos on it is, a, is a, a false. And the information that it alone would be used in the demol demolition of the World Trade Center is also a lie, and the fact that the material was dismissed, including the um, the information we got actually from the government that indicated 55 times background levels of tritium, um, the massive craters present at the World Trade Center site, including the nuke that uh, uh, that exploded in the basement that uh, Mr. William Rodriguez identified people who had burns because a flash of fire came up through the elevator shafts and caused uh, people literally to have their skin fall off them before the so-called explosion or even striking the building with the aircraft. The photos indicated the aircraft that struck the building were not American Airlines jets but had no windows. They were E-10s. Uh, my sources of information of the aircraft that struck the buildings were actually E-10s refurbished with Global Hawk guidance systems uh, done in Fort Collins, Colorado. This was an entirely a government operation and uh, that the micronukes were placed there by Israeli Mossad nuclear agents or all of the some of the most expert people in the world of micronukes including the Bali India uh, explosion which was identified as a micronuke explosion in Indonesia several years ago. So uh, when we look at all these different anomalies, the only thing that explains the anomalies, and none of them are explained by uh, by Miss Wood's uh, explanation of the idea of energetic weapons. She has no background in uh, quantum plasma physics, so no information uh, from classified sources as I have being a civilian doctor working with people in uh, U.S. Space Command, where we do have plasma-based uh, satellite uh, platform weapon systems that are that can strike the ground with plasma physics type of weapons. Those are all require sequential micronuclear explosions in space to create enough plasma to actually create an energetic uh, beam that can be collimated to have a ground strike. And there would be an external effect. We also see anomalous effects such as EMP effects that included the plenum chambers of uh, uh, air conditioners, the cell tower uh, systems are aluminum that became vaporized, the uh, mirrors on engines as well as the wheel housings that are all aluminum, they're paramagnetic. That's why the paramagnetic effect is used for conventional uh, moving of the disc in a uh, regular analog uh, power meter. 
it's a paramagnetic effect that actually turns or pulls that wheel around to actually give you a metering of the power usage. So when uh, three billions of pounds of the building were instantly turned into two billion pounds uh, into micronized dust, which primarily blew away, uh, when the debris at the Great Kills website, landfill site was radioactive and the only other site uh, done within a year by the uh, New York City uh, with a helicopter that measured radiation levels was the Israeli embassy in Manhattan. Uh, you can kind of put uh, one and one together. And when you've got... Uh, uh, 16 inch uh, steel spires that withstood uh, half a billion pounds of building falling on them and suddenly turned into limp noodles and partially vaporized. When you see uh, girders that were already uh, turned, uh, heated up to 50,000 plus degrees, the only thing that could do that is a nuclear explosion. And they, most of these bombs basically were like the size of a, a softball. They can be equivalent to 50 uh, tons of TNT. Uh, or 0 .0005 uh, kilotons, <clears throat> and they were able to, to vaporize the core of the building where the building was suspended from the inside core, and then from the outside, uh, joists like a cage. Uh, so the, the effect uh, on people also, the, in terms of the, I talked to Dr. William May, the effect of the radiation on people besides the heavy metals causes specific types of cancer. Asbestos would have caused mesothelioma of the lung. The types of acute myelogenous leukemia and other types of cancers are very specific for radiation exposure and for the uh, specific isotope patterns. So uh, all of these fit that the uh, micronuclear explosion was used for de demolition. No other steel building in history has fallen. So uh, I'm still working to try to identify that. And one of our great uh, uh, researchers in this area is Dr. Uh, Ed Ward, and he'll be back on the program. I presented this data, including Ed's data and my data, information from other sources back in uh, five years ago, June uh, 2005. I had to actually threaten to sue the Vancouver 9-11 uh, board <coughs> and the uh, the uh, producer of the videos uh, in Oregon because they refused initially to give them to me uh, because they had a change in the board. The initial board were very excited about me coming up there and when they had a change right afterward they literally clamped down and didn't even want to give them to me so it's only when I threatened to sue that within six months I finally got my DVD. So we have those available at the Nutramedical.com and ClayandIron.com so you can see that uh, people like myself and Dr. Edward are primary researchers. I have uh, requested my own alma mater where I did uh, advanced uh, organic inorganic chemistry biochemistry and my uh, radiation uh, lab colleagues back at Dalhousie University in Halifax, which is a sister university of Harvard. I've also requested universities in Ontario, British Columbia, throughout the United States, Britain, Germany, and uh, Spain, and been turned down and actually threatened that I will be notified the Department of Defense and arrested if I request a specific testing. I have had testing done, but they give me the wrong tests so that I advise them. I'm not just an MD of a background in radiation chemistry. So if you still think that any other theory fits other than micronukes, you're just wrong. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, and I did get a uh, request of, an, of a statement regarding the medical model, and Richard in Washington, here is your answer. Uh, he said, why are you participating in normal paradigm of AMA founded by the Rockefellers that is cause and treatment of patients? Firstly, I'm a trained physician and surgeon. The only surgery I haven't done is open heart and brain surgery. You cannot throw away doctors. Uh, you, you want to throw away drugs because most chronic conditions, and I don't recommend treatment of any chronic condition or prevention with drugs at all. The big problem is the drug industry has, in a sense, taken over medical schools and taken over the continuing education to a great extent. Uh, there was a suppression of scalar research, such as the Raymond Reif research, and uh, scalar, the only thing that survived that in terms of electromedicine was electrocardiograms and electroencephalograms. Uh, the issue of, uh, of Reif based what's called frequency specific harmonic uh, capacitance of tissue and specific scalar frequencies, which was researched by Nikola Tesla and others like Reif, has been suppressed. 
Uh, but you can't say just because the Rockefellers hijacked uh, medicine that doctors and surgeons are not appropriate. What we need to do, and I mentioned this before, and I'm writing a white paper on it, is what the proper model of health care should be. Number one, you don't want any kind of socialized health care system where doctors are paid a, a fee for service. That's number one. You want to have that thrown out. Number two, you want doctors paid a reasonable hourly wage based on the years experience, training, and education, and public service, including the time when they're providing work, uh, say, in city councils, in education, in the public, or in media. <clears throat> and thirdly, you don't pay them differently whether they're operating in the operating room or they're working in their office. You also have them have the capacity, and the only ones that have capacity, to actually hire other people. So if, a, uh, if the monies go back to a specific uh, county, the counties then decide, and or cities, <clears throat> how many physician, primary physicians they have. The primary physicians determine how many specialty physicians they require positions. Uh, those physicians then determine all of the staff, including mid-levels, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, PAs, etc. You don't substitute PAs and nurse practitioners for providers because you can't diagnose illness. And as I say, minor symptoms will kill you and major ones will bother you. Uh, if you have someone who has a dissecting aortic aneurysm and they have a minor symptom, you need to do a surgery on that or they're going to die. Now, yes, you can use, if you get them early enough, you can use things like a collagen max and mountain red velvet, but you can't dispense with doctors. Uh, you may not need a whole lot more doctors, but you need the proper distribution. The problem is the current paradigm doesn't allow for a proper chain of command in health care. Uh, Obama's model is to actually just substitute real health providers that have the advanced training to pick up those conditions that will kill you by putting in nurse practitioners and mid-levels or PAs or technicians which are not adequate. You cannot train a PA or a nurse practitioner to the level of a medical doctor, male or female, doesn't matter. Medical doctors have far more training and experience and, and authority, and especially when you get into subspecialties. <clears throat> um, you also need to make sure that doctors cannot specialize until they spend a minimum of five years in general practice, family internal medicine, and uh, you also cannot... Uh, uh, you know, have hospital boards and state licensing authorities that should be through national boards that are not run by the governments, run by the providers themselves. Uh, that way you can get away from all this foolishness. You get, you do tort reform by the fact that tort reform, most of the lawsuits are frivolous, that if you want to make sure that doctors are doing things correctly, you have the boards monitor educational level of experience and training. So if someone's an orthopedic surgeon, they haven't done knee surgery in five years, they need to be able to be certified to actually do it. And if they're a primary doctor in their rural practice and they're certified to do C-sections and they're doing enough of them they're, and their competency level has been proven, they should be uh, certified. And as long as you maintain levels of, of competency by re-education, uh, you avoid malpractice and you avoid frivolous lawsuits and you protect the public. Uh, you also allow doctors to develop new innovative care, which is less expensive. Innovative uh, scalar energy care, integration of hyperbaric oxygen, integration of natural nutraceuticals, genomics, and epigenetic medicine. But it is not the same as a model for Rockefeller. So uh, only 5% of doctors in practice now are belongers to the American Murder Association, or the AMA. And I'm strongly against it, as well as most doctors are. What we are doing, and if you talk to any doctor, and I have very little resistance about, and usually one condition at a time or one issue, so I don't overwhelm them, I consult with physicians virtually every day and provide them helpful uh, uh, technologies, protocols for recovery from almost any condition you can imagine, whether or not it's uh, Lyme disease, recovery from plastic surgery, loose uh, skin syndromes, traumatic brain injury, stroke, uh, retinitis pigmentosa, congestive heart failure, stem cell or tissue regeneration and organ regeneration. There's virtually uh, what's happened is the medical profession has been turned by people like Rockefeller to turn patients into an ATM machine. And I'm very strongly against that. That's why this is called the Nutramedical Program, bringing nutrition and medicine together. But you can't take away from the fact that you need to have trauma surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, general surgeons, doctors that know how to do procedures in their office, including identifying uh, issues that are well beyond the scale of energy and technology and knowledge of, say, chiropractors, naturopaths, uh, mid-level PAs, or, or nurse practitioners. <clears throat> so the idea that you can transformed through a communist regime, which is what Obama is, a red communist. He actually, remember, according to the physicist we had on a few years ago, is a was told this physicist that we would have a future president by the name of Barack Obama, or Birek is his actual Kenyan name, but his actual father is Frank Marshall Davis. You can actually see pictures of Frank Marshall Davis if you Google it, and you'll see he's Frank Marshall Davis's biological son, who was 55 years of age when he impregnated uh, uh, Stanley and Dunham. So 
uh, if you get the video, which is on now on Amazon uh, right now, and I've ordered my copy, uh, and I'll be reviewing that probably by Wednesday, of Dreams of My Real Father. And if you've already seen Obama 2016, you can see that the agenda is another term of Obama. He'll turn America into a Marxist communist state. He will have total control of the state and media uh, with the kill switch, which he wants for the Internet. <clears throat> you know, people like me either jailed, uh, executed, or imprisoned, or silenced, or he has, quote, fairness in broadcasting. He'll prevent any innovation in healthcare with life extension technology, which is literally not around the corner. It's here now. So I have people that have congestive heart failure, renal failure, need to have joint regeneration. We refer to specific clinics for cancer and other treatments. And we often have to send them outside of America because the fatal drugs allowed people, the FDA, another federal agency that should be abolished, says if your blood is multiplying your stem cells more than 24 hours, it's considered a drug when they put the own stem cells, even if it's barcoded and sealed to make certain it is your own stem cells multiplied billions of times and given back by IV or specific catheter that's now considered a drug, which is obscene. So you can't bank your child's stem cells. For example, all the workers in TEPCO should have had their bone marrow done and had their bone marrow uh, literally banked because they're going to need that bone marrow back when their stem cells crash and their tissues crash and they develop cancer. And they, one of the primary treatments is to wipe out their bone marrow as you give them advanced treatments. <clears throat> so what we have is a obscene situation where uh, the communist elite will destroy the country, destroy health care, uh, destroy personal liberty and private property, destroy the middle class and say they're going to help the, the people who need food stamps, etc. when really what we need to do is completely change the structure of what economy is. And uh, well, we're going to talk about that specifically, and I'll be bringing on experts to talk about my vision of economy, which is completely different than the communist or the so-called capitalist model, which really is international corporatism. It's not capitalism. True capitalism would allow small and medium business to grow naturally without any hindrance from the government, would prevent the public from danger, it would allow probably common law suits if violation of natural common law occurred, and would prevent this kind of foolishness from happening. But we don't have common sense, we have evil bounding, which is why we're given the Hobbesian alternative of Mitt Romney, who's a devil, and an even bigger devil with, with uh, Barack uh, Hussein Obama. And of course he's an apologist for Islam, he will, uh, he's definitely told Netanyahu he'll back him 100% after the election because his only uh, goal right now is to get reelected. And Romney already is saying he'll allow the Israelis to do anything, including what they said last night on the show uh, Homeland, which is a preemptive air attack on a live nuclear reactor, which is the most insane thing that people could consider in history and should get anyone considering this put in a padded cell with a posy on or a straitjacket and given antipsychotics for as long as we can keep them in a semi-conscious state. So, uh, you know, if people are offended by that, turn off the radio and walk away because your fate is coming if you vote for either of these fools we're facing a lot of destruction so pick up pro-life candidate and there are two of them and we will be back in a moment if you have any questions it's open lines to the last segment 800-259-5791 back in a moment We have a situation where the governor of California is now, uh, there's a couple of interesting things that the, uh, I call the, the socialist communist state of California is doing, which falls right along, of course, uh, Obama, state to require waiver for unvaccinated students. And, of course, the legislation is one of among 100 bills governor considered Sunday. Parents who don't have their children vaccinated will have to get a note from the doctor's office before enrolling their children in school under a bill uh, that Jerry, Governor Jerry Brown announced Sunday he has signed into law. AB 2109 will require parents who enroll students who have not received the required public vaccinations to get a waiver from a physician or a nurse practitioner saying they received information about the benefit and risks of immunizations. Firstly, that's a right of a violation of their civil rights. So uh, parents basically, are, and I certainly am not going to participate in that. 
Um, we have a situation where the dangers of vaccines, people are fully capable of finding out themselves. They can, we'll bring back on the program Dr. Mayor Eisenstein, who's an MD, JD. We have other sources. Uh, the Sanctity of Blood uh, book, which you can, you can Google at Amazon.com and other sources. Uh, the Vaccine Information Network. This is an obscenity. We also have, of course, a situation where rather than having a fast track for legal immigration, we have the state of California is now going to give driver's license to illegal immigrants. Now, of course, this includes people who are not properly certified drivers, people driving improper loads that are not properly balanced, improper equipment, people are actually hopped up on stimulants. It's a very dangerous situation. I know as a doctor who did uh, DMT certification evaluations in Colorado when I was doing occupational medicine in the 90s and early 2000s that I saw as a director of Ahmed for Health Cells an incredible situation where uh, one-third of accidents were caused by illegals that were driving improper vehicles, and when they'd have a serious accident or even cause death or serious injury, they weren't even legally responsible in the sense they were just deported and they were back within two to four weeks working with an employer given an ID card by the city of Denver because they wanted these people there. And I, there's no, I have no problem with people working in America, and they were fast-tracked immigration is what we need. Uh, the... Uh, there have been some uh, offers within the Republican Party to give a fast-track bill, but this never happened during the first two years of Obama, who said he was going to bring this forward. He didn't. And his so-called uh, offer of the, uh, of the DREAM Act is really a poor excuse. What they really need to do is have a very fast-track, very rapid access to people that want to immigrate here from any country who have skill sets, who have been born here, etc. And those people who commit crimes or felons in any, world, any country that are trying to, to come here can't. Uh, but they don't haven't dealt with that, and of course, especially for people who have skill sets we want in our industry, such as computing, software, chemistry, etc. From whatever country, this is ideal. And we also need to make certain that we are very aware of people immigrating from the country that are coming here from countries that are Muslim. And they need to be properly screened to make sure that they're not, quote, if they are Muslim, that they're not extreme Muslims, that they are, we call, not believing in Sharia law or in the jihad and all this other foolishness that is against the idea of being an American citizen. So we have them integrate into our country and become real Americans that believe in the American Constitution, the way of life, and the rule of law, not the rule of Sharia or that their religion is superior to the American uh, system. Uh, American justice system, of course, is falling down because judges are doing incorrect uh, judging, uh, such as setting up Obamacare. And uh, Obamacare is a violation of the rights of people, especially seniors who have paid all their life and are going to be told in their 70 years of age to go to death panels or they're going to be given vouchers as a stupid system that was proposed by Ryan and Romney. And, of course, Romney and Ryan tried to sidestep the issue of dealing with uh, gay and lesbian marriage, although Obama now has come up very clearly uh, to believe in that, that the sanctity of marriage needs to be protected so that we do not have destruction of the family because the family is the building blocks, the bricks, upon which you build society. If you destroy the family, you don't have a society. You've got a collection of people you have to herd. And that's a very difficult thing indeed unless you herd them by violence, by a uh, biometric system of tracking and control. So uh, a very bad idea, and biocommunists, and of course the Marxist communist ideas have destroyed the Soviet Union, Russia, have destroyed much of China. Uh, right now what they have is a new form that's not really communism at all in, in uh, China. What they have is what's called market, very aggressive capitalism, where the 80 million communists run the state as the new emperors of, of China. And uh, that's why more than 80% of the billionaires in the world in the last decade are all Chinese because they buy our international laws for movement of insurance money through the Glass-Steagall Act, etc. We've moved all our manufacturing overseas, which is destroying America. And, of course, you can't support a large military unless you have industry, unless you print money and force other countries to use it because you're the bully on the block that willing to send predator drones to kill people in their, when they're having a wedding on the Pakistani uh uh, border or near Afghanistan or anywhere else that they want to get you in Yemen uh, even if you're an American citizen you don't get proper uh, rule of law so that's the kind of world we're moving into a very dangerous one where the FAA has approved uh, 30,000 drones over America over the next few years under the Obama administration many of them not only armed with advanced imaging technologies but weapon systems to monitor and or kill you with the National Defense Authorization Act just simply because you're perceived to be an enemy of the state or the enemy of the 
globalists that run the state as a proxy for their new world order. So uh, America, the good, would be gone and simply being integrated into a world army to control people through the green agenda that Obama wants to shove down our throats. Well, solar activity and other things indicate that the CME activity is going to blast our, uh, like the Carrington event, of 1859 is likely to blast our civilization to pieces and the globalists want to maintain control despite that so uh, we're dealing with a situation where we have maniacs uh, that are evil and and, and extremely stupid uh, at the same time and uh, world events are moving us very quickly so the Syrian uh, foreign minister also tells us the assembly that the security council members supporting terrorism and then in fact uh, this so-called idea that there is he had a, a speech that was colored by conspiratorial undertones that clearly aimed at the United States and its allies that support their enemies. And, of course, this is facts. We've actually had people we've interviewed on the program that, in fact, what's going on in in Syria is that uh, al-Qaeda and terrorists have been supported as a branch of the U.S. government foreign policy, which are part of the Muslim Brotherhood to kill Syrian citizens, including Christians, to kill military personnel and police and citizens inside Syria to de- topple the regime and put in a caliphate, which is Sunni Muslim, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, high-level Mason, uh, linked directly to the globalist banksters. And if you think this is not going on, you're delusional. And the fact is that we're moving quickly to a dialectic where the alliance, the dark alliance between Sunni Islam, including the uh, Saudis, the Qataris, etc., uh, and the globalists are panicking because they can't get control. Well, Russia and China have drawn a line in the sand. They're not going to capitulate to this. And um, I expect to see sometime in the next year or so after the almost certain re-election of Obama because, you know, Romney is so bad he even makes Obama the devil that he is look good. That's how bad this is. And uh, Obama's plan is to turn America into a Marxist communist state uh, to destroy health care, to destroy personal liberty. You'll have to show your papers, please. You'll have terahertz scanners everywhere. You'll have TSA agents at the train stations and bus stations everywhere. It'll be like going to Netanya, Israel, where if you have to take your bags and go through a metal detector, a screening set of questions, and you'll maybe even have body cavity searches or an ultrasound to be able to be admitted to go shopping. And people think that that's not likely to happen. We'll just have a few more terrorist activities, and you'll see. And, of course, if they do what this show last night on Homeland said, that they attack uh, Iran <clears throat> with nuclear weapons, including a live reactor, these maniacs, and that's what I get particularly disturbed by shows like this because it brings out an issue, which is we are run by a foreign policy of people that are psychotically, literally imbued by demonic power. And uh, this idea of hitting a live nuclear reactor, killing uh, not only 3,000 citizens they talked about in this show, but the possibility, according to the Physicians for Social Responsibility, perhaps up to 30 million people that will die from radiation injuries downwind from hitting the live Bashir reactor. This is just desperately evil. Desperately evil. And uh, both Obama and Romney both support this. Romney, before the election, if he could, somehow get the Israelis to tweak it. Uh, Obama definitely afterward as well. So, uh, this is very scary times, and we're heading toward the fiscal cliff. We'll probably have uh, a gr- degree of gridlock, so Obama won't get things done unless he acts as a dictator through executive order. So we'll talk about much more of this with an hour three with Mike Villardi. Mike Villardi, V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A.com. We have some amazing guests coming up. Joel Chernoff tomorrow, first hour. Freeman, FreemanTV.com, with his amazing new uh, books, You don't want to mention IQ Al-Razuli coming in with 26 fatwas on his head from Britain. We cannot give you his location. And we'll have uh, Andrew Maggioni from AMAC uh, on Thursday. So the show is bumping it up a bunch more notches and a lot more intense as we move forward to a very scary world where shows like Homeland portray a possible future timeline that's very dark indeed. Back in just a moment. (laughs) 